How's it going everybody? Christian here today and we're going to be continuing the ACSL lesson series and this time we're going to be going over graph theory so I have a lot of different explanations of what graph theory is and then we'll supplement that with a bunch of questions that we can practice and go through together. So the first thing is pretty basic. The three things that are super important. The graph is going to be a collection of vertices and edges as shown here. Here's a sample graph. An edge is a connection between two vertices or nodes and you know you can see that here then a vertex or a node is like what is actually being connected so for example the edges it's like the line between h and i or between g and a and then the vertex or node is i h g a that's what that's talking about next up we'll talk about paths so that's like a vertex a to b that's a list of the vertices that are going to be connected. So for example, if you have a path G to C, uh, those paths could be G E F A C or G A C. And a simple path is something where no vertex is repeated. So you can have G A B A C. That's technically a path, but it's not a simple path because you're going over that A multiple times. Similarly, you can say G A G is a simple path because you've gone over the G multiple times. Now on to connectedness and cycles. This is not considered connected, which means that there's a path from every vertex to every ver other vertex. So say you covered up the J, K, L, M, and H, I, and all you had was this A, B, C, D, E, F, G structure, then that would be a connected graph. However, instead, this is what's called connected components, because there are different components and they are connected, but they're not all connected together. Lastly, we have a cycle where a path that has the same first and last vertex, so as I was talking about before, GAG is considered a cycle. Similarly, GAFEG, or as I've mentioned over here, AFDEGA is a cycle. Here we'll talk about trees. So a tree is a graph with no cycles. And that would mean that there are n minus 1 edges. So, for example, this is considered a tree, hi, because they are only connected by this. And there's not more than n minus 1 edges. So all of this over here are also trees because, as you can see, there's four individual nodes and there's only three edges. Now, this is what a spanning tree would look like. So a subgraph, which contains all the vertices or forms of a tree. So here's like a spanning tree for three or spanning tree for four. Then a forest is a group of disconnected trees. So this would be viewed as a forest um, because there's just a bunch of different disconnected trees. Then there are important things called directed graphs. So a directed graph is very similar to what we were looking at before, but this is when the edges also have direction associated. So before, if you look here, you could traverse either A to F or F to A, whereas over here, you can only go from C to A. You can't go from A to C. You'd have to go A, G, C. Now, the HI is a traditional graph because it goes both ways. Now, a DAG, or directed acrylic graph, is a directed graph with no cycles. Uh, and a complete graph means that all edges are present, a sparse graph means that there are relatively few edges present, and a dense graph is considered when there are relatively few edges missing. Before we go any further, I should talk about how graphs relate to adjacency matrices. So this is an adjacency matrix. Basically, that means that it shows where the connections are. So say you have A. Um, now, they cannot connect to each other unless there's like a circle or a cycle that, you know, fr points from A to A, but that's not the case here. So here A can either lead to B or C, but it can't lead to D. So it's a 1 here, a 1 here, because this is kind of like the C column, and then the D column is a 0. If you look at B, it does lead to A, so it has the 1 here. It does not lead to itself, so it's a zero here. It leads to C, the one is there, and it also leads to D, the one is here. So it fills out like that. And then if you want to see something, you know, how long is a path, how many paths are available, we'll talk about in the next question. You can multiply the matrix by itself, and that will tell you the number of paths and from where they originate to where they go. Example, here we have a question. How many paths of length three are there in the directed graph at right? So you get that adjacency matrix, and then you have to cube it. 
and the result is this. So 3221-3232-2122-2012. And as a side note here, you cannot get from D to B in three steps. That's basically what it's saying after you cube this by three times. Whereas you can get from D to C in one way. That's A, B, C. But you couldn't get there in two. Whereas you can get from, this is telling me A to A in three ways. And let's see if we can find that. You could go A, C, B, A, A, C, D, A, or A, B, D, A. However, once you look at this, you see that there are a total of 3 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 3 plus 2 plus 3 plus 2 and so on for a total answer of 30 paths of length 3. Here's a little bit more about adjacency matrix, but this is kind of more theory. So if you have the following adjacency matrix, how many lines between vertices are bidirectional? having the arrowhead at both ends. So either you could draw it and then count it up, but I like to do it kind of conceptually. So their easy way is to see where the ones have corresponding locations. So this means, you know, here, if you have this, this means that B goes to A, and this means A goes to A, this means A goes to B. So you have a connection here. So anywhere where it's the inverse, it will have by, it'll be bidirectional. So the outer part has three. If you look here, it's one to one, one to one. The second outermost has two. And then after that, there are none that are matched. So this one doesn't match to its spot here. These two also match to zeros. And then this zero obviously won't be anything, but here zero to zero doesn't match, one to zero doesn't match, and one to zero doesn't match either. So the answer is going to be five. For this one, we're going to talk about simple paths in terms of graph theory. So the simple paths of length three are not going to be repeating. So if you start from D to A, then you would be able to go to B, then C, or you can go D, A, E, C. And then if you go from D to B, then you can go to A, E, or from B to C, E. And, as, you know, as a note, you can't go D, B, A, D because that's not a simple path. D, E can go A, B, or C, B. And those are the three places that D can go to. So our answer is six. Lastly, we have a graph theory one, again, with paths. Which directed pairs of vertices do not have paths of length three? And this is, I decided not to do any reveal or anything, but you get the adjacency matrix and then you cube it. So you multiply itself by three and then you end up getting this adjacency matrix. And what you notice is that there's nothing from A to B, nothing from C to B and nothing from D to B. But this actually makes sense because if you actually look B only can stem from itself, so there's one path B, 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 and then there's no other way from nodes A, C, or D to reach B. So thanks for watching, and do a little bit more practice to get a more varied set of problems to work with, but I hope that these were helpful and interesting.